Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I'm going to share some tips on how to do better follow up during your sales process using pipe drive. Now, regular watchers of my YouTube channel might have realized I'm in a new office today. And as I shared in one of my recent videos, minor updates, which I'll link up here, my wife and I were actually building house. So we're in this rental for the next six months. So expect to see this new office in my upcoming videos. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing Pipedrive for your sales process, maybe you want to automate more of your process, then click the link in the description below to book a call with my team and learn more about our Pipedrive support options. So here is an example deal where I'm talking to this person, Warwick Palm, about a potential website project. I have my deal in this offer made stage. So you can see I've, I've completed an introductory call. I've sort of, I've scoped the project. I've got the deal in offer made. That's how I have my pipe drive configured. So this simply means I have sent a proposal or a quote. And now the prospect is in that key stage where they need to decide, am I going to accept this proposal or this, this quote? So let's look at some ways that we can follow up effectively in Pipedrive to increase the likelihood of this of winning this deal. Now, the first thing you need to do, and if you've watched other, uh, other videos of mine in the past, you've probably heard me say this before, is you need to make sure you have some kind of activity on every single deal that you have open at the moment. So if I click the activities tab here, I've got all these different types of activities I can use to define what it is that I need to do next. And this is all customizable from your company settings. If you're an admin of the account and you go to company settings, uh, activities, you can see I've got lots of, lots of um, custom activities that I've created here. So now that I've sent an offer to this person, I think the first thing I might do is schedule a call maybe in a couple of days. Uh, I'm going to call them. So I'm going to use my call activity and I'm going to leave myself a little note down here. Um, does he have any questions about the proposal? So that's just sort of an internal reminder to myself. What am I following up about? So there we go. I've now simply set my next action, the thing I need to do next to try and move this deal forward. Of course, the prospect, they're the one that needs to make the decision. But as an active or proactive salesperson, I'm going to use the activity to remind myself to follow up at an appropriate time. Now, when you follow this best practice and you schedule activities on your deals, you can come to your deals page. So here's the pipeline. I'm actually in my demo account now. You can look at these little icons to see if you are keeping up with your follow up or not. So here's an example. This little yellow green icon tells me I have an activity that's scheduled for today. So green is good. That means I'm following up on this deal today. If I see a little yellow warning triangle like this, this is highlighting a deal where I have no activity scheduled. This is a potential issue because if I don't have an activity scheduled, there's nothing reminding me what I need to do next. And this is probably a deal that's now going to fall through the cracks. We're not going to follow up because I have no reminder set. So the best practice would be to schedule some kind of activity. So let's say I'm following up later this week. And you can see now that icon uh, turns gray. So this means I have a future scheduled activity. Or if you see a red icon like this, this is showing I have overdue activities. This is bad because obviously I'm falling behind. I should have followed up a little while ago. And this is a deal that is now going stale. And I've, I've essentially I've let that slip through the cracks and I'm less likely to win that deal. So when you look at your deals page, you want to be seeing gray or green. You do not want to be seeing the red or the yellow warnings. Now, if I'm following this best practice and I have an activity scheduled on every deal that I have open at the moment, I find the best way to use Pipedrive is to work from this activities page. I find what most Pipedrive users do, we certainly see this with most of the clients we talk to, is they're not scheduling activities. And instead, they look at their pipeline and they sort of manually scan the pipeline and try and figure out who shall I follow up with today. So you're really relying on yourself to know who is the best person to follow up with. Whereas I think it's better, as I said, to schedule an activity at the appropriate time to follow up and instead use this activities page. So this activities page is essentially my to-do list. 
You can see mine is showing a number five up here. This means I have five activities due today, or I might have overdue activities, and I would see those on the overdue tab there. But because I don't have anything overdue, mine just shows five. And if I sort by these columns, I can sort by done. Here are the five activities I still have to do up here. And what I like to do is I'll click on each activity one by one. And you can see I've got my deal column here and I can click the, the name of that deal and the deal slides into view. If you're not seeing this, make sure you have this open details in full view option turned on. That means I can click the deal, my activities I can still see in the background and the deal comes into view. So in this case, I need to send a follow up and I'm going to send them an email. And so I can click the email tab here. And if you haven't already, check out my email, uh, my video linked above about how to connect Pipedrive to your Google or Microsoft email if you haven't done this already. And from here, I can choose one of my email templates. I've got this sales first follow up template. You can see it's going to populate with the person's name. I'm going to tweak this slightly to address their goals. I'm going to choose one of the links to send. And then once I'm happy, I will click send. Once I've sent my email, I can then mark this activity as complete because I've now done that follow up. And you can see what's happened now is Pipedrive has popped up this window to ask me, OK, what's the next action? You know, I have followed up today. I'm going to assume maybe this person doesn't get back to me. So if he doesn't get back to me, maybe I'll call them in a week. So let's put this as the 1st of May and I'm going to set a call. Uh, and this is where I think it's always good to try multiple methods of follow up. You know, today I might try an email. Next week I might try a call or I might try sending a text message if that's appropriate. I think it's always good to experiment with different channels of communication to see what the prospect responds well to. So now that I've done the follow up for this particular deal, I can um, use the arrows here to go to the next activity. So I can actually go to the top of my list and you can see the selected activity updating there. And so I like doing this because it really helps me to just get through those follow ups really quickly. So now I'm on the next follow up. Uh, I can do this one and then move to the next one. Now, another tip I will share here is to log every interaction you have or every attempted follow up on the deal. So you can see looking back here, there was the introductory call last week. I tried calling yesterday, an email and a text have both been sent today. And so this gives me a bit of history, which is useful because it allows me to see how many times have I tried following up with this person. You know, it might get to the point where I followed up 10, 15 times. Maybe I'm not getting a response. It's useful to be able to refer back and see how many different attempts or touch points have I made and what are they responding to? Maybe I get a response to this text and I can, I can you know, put their response in there. Or if they, if I do get through on a call, I might type my notes in here so I can see what we talked about. If you're anything like me, you're managing lots of different prospects at once and you're not very good at remembering where you are with each one. So I really rely on using the activities to track what I've done and every conversation I've had. So if I talk to Warwick, let's say we get on the call today, I would literally make notes on the call about the things we discussed. So Warwick had, had some concerns about price. He'll revisit this next month. So I'd record things like this so that when I mark that as done and uh, there we go, I'm going to schedule my follow up for next month. I can look back a month from now and I can see what we talked about. The next time I follow up, I can address his concerns around price. Now, if you can master this simple best practice, again, have an activity scheduled on every single deal. Work from the activities page every day so that you keep up with your follow up, log your interactions on the deal, keep good notes, then you are in the top 5% of Pipedrive users. This is definitely one of those things we see coming up again and again with our clients is they're not using the activities correctly. And if you can master this, I guarantee you will close more deals and you will generate more revenue for your business. Now, a useful report that's going to help you decide how much you should keep following up is this deal duration report. You can create this from your insights by clicking to add a new report and then going to deal duration here. And you'll get a report that looks a bit like this. 
If I look at the bar graph here, I can see how long on average do deals live in each of my stages. So for my offer made stage, I can see on average a deal sits in here for four days and six hours based on 321 deals. Or I might just choose to show my scorecard. This is just simply the average number of days it takes to close a deal from opening to either winning the deal or losing it. So this kind of indicates to me that after two weeks of creating that deal, that's sort of my average time to close the deal. If I'm taking, you know, four weeks or longer, maybe I'm starting to waste my time based on the average duration that I've seen in the past. Now, as you continue following up with your deals, you're going to have to use some judgment about how much you keep following up, or maybe you might get to the point where you need to lose the deal. For example, maybe if I have followed up a number of times and I can see that because I've been tracking all my interactions, I'm now past that sort of average duration. This person's not responding. I might decide at this point to lose the deal and I've got various lost reasons I can choose here. I might choose client wouldn't respond and I can just close that deal. I'm not going to follow up anymore. Now, sometimes, and this is a question we get a lot from our clients, people ask, what shall I do if the person just says, you know, I need more time, follow up with me next quarter or in six months from now? What I recommend in that situation is I would lose the deal because it's really not a deal that's going to be won anytime soon. I might say timing not right. And I'm going to put a comment here in, in here, asked for follow up in Q4. So I'm going to lose my deal. The reason for losing the deal is that's going to hide it on my pipeline. The deal is still here and I can choose to reopen this later if I need to, but it's going to not be visible on my pipeline anymore, which I think is a good thing. I only want to see my good quality active deals that I'm pursuing right now. And then I would schedule an activity. In this case, I might edit this existing one and I'm going to say, let's follow up in uh, Q4. And I'm going to set myself a, no uh, a reminder, ask for follow up in Q4. Now they have budget. So that's just going to be, it's going to be good to have that reminder. Um, he told me he'd have budget in Q4. So I'm just going to make myself aware of that when I see this later this year. And again, if I'm following that best practice of going to my activities page every single day, when I look at my activities on October 17th here, I'm going to see this follow up. I'm going to be reminded to now reach out to this person and I can reopen my deal. Now, a really useful feature that can really speed up my follow-up is to use the workflow automation features in Pipedrive. And if you haven't already, check out my video, which I'll link up here, that shows you how to get started creating automations. And this does require the advanced subscription of Pipedrive. Uh, but this is going to allow you to create automations like this, where when I update a deal and I move a deal to this ready to proceed stage, the workflow can create activities for me based on that stage that I've moved to. So this is a really useful way of almost creating like a checklist. So as we get to a certain stage, the appropriate activities get created and I don't have to manually create those. So here's an example of that in practice. I'm in quote sent and I move to ready to proceed. And if I give pipe drive a second here, there we go. It's created my three activities telling me what I need to do next. So. I don't have to think about what I need to do. The automation just takes care of that for me and says, these are the activities you need to complete based on the stage that we're now in. Now you could choose to take this a step further and send automated follow-up emails to the prospect using a template following up. Now, I would caution you to think carefully here about whether that's gonna be the best um, way to proceed or not. What I find is when you automate things like email follow-up, yes, it does save you some time, but you are sacrificing personalization. It's always better if you can personalize the email, address any concerns, reference their goals. You're going to have a much better outcome if you can speak to their specific needs, which is why personalizing the email or getting on the phone is always going to be more effective. So there we go. Those are some tips on how to do your follow-up more effectively using Pipedrive. If you have any questions or if you've got some good follow-up tips or strategies of your own, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing Pipedrive for your business, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Pipedrive support options. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.